Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our great engine game series and our crazy Leela series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and this time we are looking not at Leela Knight odds games but also at a Rook odds game. Um, a Rook, that's way too much surely. Well, if you have a look at what Leela's doing with it, um, you wouldn't really think so. This is um, um, a series of games played against... Uh, um, a 27.50 uh, plus um, strength uh, leeches blitz and bullet player and um, it just makes uh, <laughs> being a rook down look like a forced win let's have a look how Leela does this so d4 knight f6 c4 e6 and e3 from uh, Leela slightly unusual um, not quite sure what Lila would have done against um, Bishop B4 check. Maybe maybe just Bishop D2. Maybe that's the idea, just to uh, um, avoid having the um, uh, having the knight exchange for the bishop and just uh, swap off one uh, set of minor pieces. But that does seem quite sensible for Black, I have to say. Um, D5 played by Black. Knight C3 and Bishop E7. Solid Queen's Gambit declined type position. What is Black? What is White going to do here? Well, Leela comes up with a very uh, interesting system, actually. Um, it's been played a little bit in um, in Blitz by some strong players I saw. Um, but, um, yeah, it's also uh, the type of setup I've been playing quite a lot myself in, um, in Blitz, which is basically um, trying to get the centre solid, um, and then advancing the um, the kingside pawns without castling and accepting a, an isolated queen's pawn as well if um, if black chooses to uh, create it. It's turned out to be quite dangerous against my opponents in uh, in blitz. They're normally around you know 2700, 2800. Uh, that's the level that I uh, that I play at on uh, on Lee chess. So um, yeah, interesting to see how uh, difficult it is with uh, um, you know with uh, black having a rook advantage. Leela takes on d5 again. Sort of feels interesting maybe to go knight takes d5, try and uh, exchange off a knight and also you know create an isolated queen's pawn maybe. But um, e takes d5 played from black, nothing wrong with that. Bishop d3 and castles. Knight e2 and um, knight bd7 from um, from black. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think Black's uh, sort of taking the David Navarra approach. Yeah? You remember the uh, the Knight's Odd match that um, the uh, Czech Super Grandmaster David Navarra played against Leela uh, some months ago. And uh, he just went for, you know, pretty solid classical um, uh, systems, really trying to stop Leela from attacking him. And he was very successful in this. However, I mean, you know, this Leela is um, is a, another step up somehow. Um, although I'm, I'm not I'm not. Uh, you know, sure that uh, that Leela would beat David uh, the way that he played in that match, but I think Leela would definitely cause uh, you know even more problems somehow. Um, what's interesting here actually is just that the engines are um, suggesting some incredible moves, uh, like for example, simply b5, bishop b5, knight bd7. You know, distract the bishop away from the um, um, from the uh, attack on the king side, and just um, uh, make sure that you've got open lines for the rook. Not stupid at all, I have to say. It's um, not a silly idea at all. Um, pretty crazy, huh? And interesting to see how the um, the engines, you know, without any um, any sort of odds training, are actually uh, fighting against this. I think it just really shows how uh, inherently active they are. And uh, they don't particularly see a difference with black being a rook up or black being a rook for a pawn up um, if there's activity in return. But um, F3 played by um, by Leela. And what's the idea of F3? Well, it's pretty common uh, setup for white. Uh, normally you're aiming for uh, E4 at some stage, but that's not what Leela wants. After C5, um, by the way, um, Stockfish again uh, recommending B5 here. But after C5, Leela's playing G4. And the idea simply is we're going to disrupt black, just um, move these pawns up and uh, create an attack on the um, against the king side. The kind of thing that we've seen uh, some classic games of uh, the great Akiba Rubinstein uh, back in the 1900s, 1910s uh, doing. You know, it's that sort of thing, only yeah, just super fast, basically super accelerated and without a rook on a1. So c takes d4 played by black, 
It's not a bad move. Um, Leela replies uh, actually the way that I'm always replying uh, whenever I'm playing these plans. Just e takes d4. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the advantage of taking back with uh, the pawn on d4 is that you stop this knight from moving to any of those squares. So you're keeping the, uh, the black pieces at bay and, um, you're ready just to, um, uh, just to, uh, advance with your, um, with your pawns. So one interesting thing here is that Leela, uh, takes a little bit of time now just to, uh, just to adjust the position to the maximum. So queen c2 is very typical. You're threatening g5, uh, hitting the pawn on h7 h6 from black is a pretty yeah uh, feels odd but you know um um what i can say is that um 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 in you know my experiments with this in blitz there's no really you know um non um weakening way for black to deal with this because you know you've got to deal with g5 and bishop h7 if you go h6 then you've got g5 and if you go g6, then I'm always um, uh, maybe after preliminary bishop h6, but playing h4 to h5 quickly and aiming for g6. So th that's, you know, that's the thing about it. Leela's constantly giving you these uh, these things where you say, oh, not really sure what is a good choice. h6 is as good as any other. But I mean, it's just pretty clear that you, you know, you are going to have uh, to face some sort of danger at some stage, whether it's, you know, really big danger. Um, that's not very clear, but there is going to be danger. And uh, what Leela does, and this is the thing that Leela's doing really well, and the human players find really hard to do when playing, you know, lots of material down. Leela's just taking the time here to uh, organise the pieces. King's moving over to d1, um, just out of, uh, off the e-file. They'll give the knights uh, freedom to move. Yeah, probably getting ready to tuck it away on, uh, on, the, uh, on the queen side. And um, and then just um, uh, be able to push the pawns. Yeah, I mean, the engines um, are kind of uh, the other engines, you know, Stockfish and uh, Torture are sort of either looking to castle kingside or, you know, even artificially castling that way. But it feels wrong, right? I mean, you, you want to move those pawns forward. You want to have space to move the pawns forward. And uh, it's not about, you know, getting your king as safe as possible. It's about as making um, the opponent's king as unsafe as possible and then doing what you can with your own king. And that's what, you know, Leela with this um, special odds net, that's what Leela's actually managing. So bishop d7 from, uh, from black, a kind of calm way of playing. Um, h4, and now a very interesting uh, idea. Black played the move, bishop takes g4. And that's not a bad idea at all um, in principle. Um, I mean, you could play calmly. I mean, you could just play a move like rook c8. That's absolutely possible. Um, the engines were looking at that and just trying to absorb the attack. But OK, you know, I mean, you've got to calculate stuff like bishop g6 and all that. Not necessarily 100% uh, easy, but the engines think it's not actually that dangerous. Um, the engines are also looking at this move, amazingly enough. This was Torch's idea, knight e4, just with the idea of take, take, bishop e4, bishop g4. So basically aiming up with a bishop on g4 rather than a knight. And well, the, the pin and uh, the control over the light squares is, is, is not bad somehow. You know, it gives you a bit more um, of a barrier on the king side as well as some sort of attack against the white king. So knight e4, incredible. But I mean, you know, you notice again, right? I mean, the engine's not at all afraid to give back material in order to break up any activity from white. And uh, I, I think we can learn a lot from that, right? I mean, I really do, because I think that's one of the the big things that um, um, that's become clear over the years is that, uh, uh, you know, after years of uh, saying that uh, engines are materialistic, I think it's you know really emerging that, yeah, we, we are now the ones that are way more materialistic than the engines. Activity is what's important. But what black does is 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 good, right? Uh, takes takes and knight g4 here. And, uh, you know, what um, what black's doing is uh, threatening knight f2, opening up uh, stuff, not letting white just come forward, but fighting back. The only downside to what black has done and the reason black's got to be very careful is th minus 3.8 still. So, you know, really, really good. But um, is that uh, Black's abandoned control of the light squares and this knight is not a solid barrier um, on the king's side. So Black's got to make sure that the initiative that Black's got is really going to make the difference. If Black doesn't manage that, then Black's going to get pushed back and then you're just going to end up with a weak king's side. 
and well i can imagine you understand which scenario that was but you know it's just that it's not easy for black to do but this is the the right sort of spirit you know in terms of uh, in terms of fighting uh leela with odds so knight g3 played uh, by leela and here black actually makes uh, quite a serious mistake yeah serious mistake already and um, actually you should just keep on uh, attacking bishop takes h4 i mean i imagine that black was rather nervous about opening the h file as well but i mean it's attacking the knight it's fighting back if the knight moves away you've got knight f2 you know it's also causing some problems for um for uh, for white but the position gets really unclear and sharp queen e2 hitting the knight in return black's got to find the move h5 to uh, to block it the idea being that knight h5 we've got knight f2 check forking these two so for example we can play king to c2 one idea g6 and then the engines were looking at this and this and you know we're teeing up somehow uh, all sorts of danger another idea was to play knight f5 immediately this was torches um just you know ready to sack the rook on uh, on h1 queen g2 knight f2 king c2 and black's got to find queen f6 rook f1 and now this incredible idea rook e1 from uh, from the engines with the idea of rook e1 knight takes d3 opening up an attack but i mean you see the tactics right i mean uh, it's um it's it's not like uh, oh uh, we make this sacrifice on g4 and then that's finished no more attack now nah, i mean you know leela's anticipated all this stuff and uh, just finding you know seeing lots of ways to still cause danger against that black king so you know it's a hell of a challenge it's why when you know people ask me you know what score would you make i'm sort of thinking well to be honest a couple of draws in 10 uh, I'd, I'd settle for that against leela I mean, just, uh, you know, just it's just really, really strong, you know, so um, I'm going to try it uh, at some stage, but just uh, waiting until I've uh, I've got some holiday and uh, feeling a little bit more relaxed and not so stressed about work. But black played um, knight c4 here, which is uh, aggressive, hitting uh, e3, but queen e2. And uh, do you know the engines torch and stockfish are saying it's 0, 0, 0 now equal? And um, there's only one way for black to uh, to hold the draw. You know, it just it's just turned around so quickly. Yeah. And house, what's the way you've got to give back some material. So uh, what the engines want, uh, they want to go F5. And after takes, to be honest, it doesn't look particularly equal to me, but they um, they think that this position is um, is uh, equal somehow that uh, black can hold this. But yeah, I mean, blacks are pawn up, but yeah, the king side's porous. I mean, it looks like full compensation. Well, it's 0, 0, 0, so full compensation, but I wouldn't fancy particularly playing it with black. But the point is, you know, I mean, you can play moves like bishop d6, bishop b4, you can, you know, start fighting. You can start fighting white on the king side somehow better because there are open lines. But yeah, it's obviously not what black should be aiming for. After knight f6, knight f5 plus 1.93. I mean, the engine's already saying, OK, finished, easy. Next game, please. You know, it's move 17 already, you know, and uh, and Black's basically made, you know, one mistake. And um, and um, and uh, yeah, you know, you're you're, uh, you're completely lost already with with rook odds. Just incredible. I just cannot get over, um, you know, how quickly these games turned around. So queen g2, threatening mate on g7, knight h5, queen g4, we're at plus six now. Um, because simply there's no way to, <laughs> to there's no way to uh, um, to keep the uh, the king side safe. And uh, you know this move of, of Leela's king d1 has been great. You know the king safe off the e file can uh, easily come to c2 b1 if it needs to. And meanwhile it's the black king that's looking unsafe. So g6 was tried by black. I mean for want of anything else, right? Uh, knight h6, king g7, knight f7, boom. Hitting the king, we've got bishop g6 and queen g6, whatever we want to do, really. Um, so queen b6 tried by black, but now knight takes d5. Yeah, everything's collapsing somehow. And this king's still uh, absolutely safe. I mean, you can't uh, you can't take on b2 because we're just going to mate on, um, on g6 after taking on b2 afterwards. Black tried queen a6, but after takes, takes, and then knight e5. Um, black lost on time here um but of course it's just completely winning um knights forking the queen and also helping the the white queen to attack g6 so after queen d5 we just take check and um well whatever you like king f8 for example uh, we go bishop h6 check knight g7 queen g7 checkmate 
So there we are. I mean, that's rook odds against a 2750 to 2800 um, bullet and blitz player on Lee Chess. Um, simply astonishing. Um, and again, you know, what's so striking and um, again, counterintuitive when you're talking about rook odds is that the game turned um, within two or three moves. Um, it got sharp a couple of uh, of you know, not massive mistakes, but, you know, not being able to uh, to find the force to to really keep on going and enter a whole maelstrom of tactics. And within a couple of moves, you're completely lost and the engines are just finishing it off without any problem at all. Um, you know, I, and again, you know, the uh, the key thing was black giving back. She needed to give back material, you know, in order to um, to break the attack. Um, and I think, you know, it's just a question of really, you know, for human players recalibrating what, how powerful is a dynamic initiative and how, um, you know, how soon should we be willing to give up material to break it and get dynamism back for ourselves? And um, I think, you know, the answer, to, you know, to that, to, certainly to the second question is way, way earlier than you would ever dream. You know, it's... Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, but this is, uh, you know, fantastic fun. I've got another another two Rook Odds games uh, for you, you know, to, to show you, which are all, you know, simply amazing. So uh, do keep uh, tuned for that. And, um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm going to keep on going uh, for the foreseeable future with, uh, you know, these odd games, as well as, uh, you know, lots of, uh, of other uh, classic games that I'm looking at, um, just because uh, there's just an inexhaustible supply of, uh, of super chess somehow. So there we are. You know, thanks very much for watching and hope to see you at the next videos. Thanks for watching.